halibut. Yeah. And here. Here. Oh. Oh, so wait, Monday, twelve to six. Let's see. Okay. If you don't like fish and you work here. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Halibut is my favorite. I haven't had pickerel in a really long time. Black cod, wow, look at that one. So, halibut is quite a bit more. Hi, everyone, welcome to Cooking with Carl and Baking with Becca. Although today we're doing more of a cooking day with Carl. Carl, what are we making today? We are going to do classic pub style fish and chips. Yum, yes. delicious. Yeah, and uh, regular potatoes, and then also sweet potato fries. As per your request. Yeah. So we're doing sweet potato fries in the oven, and twice fried regular baked chips. So those will be really, really good too. Yeah. So before we get in, we're actually just gonna go through our recipe list and take you through. The recipe is actually fairly simple, and if everything is up to temp and at proper, you know, on proper form, uh, the longest thing that will take is probably the chips in the oven, which are about 25 minutes, yeah. but the actual frying, putting together process is gonna take a far shorter time. The chips take longer than the fish. The fish you're maybe frying for maybe five to six minutes, and then the, the chips themselves, overall, you're probably frying for 10 to 12 minutes, and that's twice. So, it's double a pretty- Double fried. Double right? fried, yeah. yeah. So it's a great way to do it, like a quick, delicious, recipe that actually impresses people if you know you're having people over now that we're allowed to have a few more people over which is a celebration yeah, 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 yeah. starting soon fully I think, vaccinated yeah fully yeah. vaccinated tomorrow i think you're allowed to have like six people at a table outside and a few people like a small few people at your house this maybe is isn't it it's crazy so yay us that's very exciting so let's get right into that ingredients list yeah so for our ingredients you first have Two pounds of white fish. So we got uh, cod, right? From yeah. a nice place called Hooked uh, in the Kensington Market. Yes, and this gentleman was such an expert on nice. fish. Which kind of cod was Icelandic? It was Icelandic cod because this is the most affordable cod that you can get. And something about the bones, right? Yeah, and it was also a boneless cod, which was amazing. Um, but, and I mean, it's boneless because they've taken out the bones yeah. for us, not just because it's a boneless fish. That would be like. I don't know, what, an octopus yeah. <laughs> uh, or a jellyfish, but certainly um, boneless fish, but they also had, if you want to use it, you can use halibut, you can use black cod, you can be more expensive if you wish, but we're thinking on a budget and quick for time, right Carl? Or, or tilapia. Tilapia too. Um, so the other thing you're going to put in, so once you've got your fish, and you want your fish at about a room temperature if you can, you want a teaspoon of salt, we got salt yeah. a half teaspoon of black pepper, mm -hmm. You want one cup of all-purpose flour, which Carl is going to grab now. You want one tablespoon of garlic powder. These are your seasonings now. One tablespoon of paprika, if you like things a little bit smoky. You want two teaspoons of seasoned salt, if you've got it. One large egg, lightly beaten. And then you want one and one-third cups of beer. So today, we're using a bone shaker. It's going to be hoppy. I don't know. It's the only beer I had at home. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, the good news is, is that once it fries and cooks, all of the alcohol comes out, so you're yeah. all good. Yeah. And then, of course, canola oil for frying, or you can use corn oil if you call it corn oil. Either way, both of those oils are great. So the good news is, is that what we can do is go to the store and buy a really inexpensive canola. I think that was like two bucks a container. They had the big jugs, but it, it jumped up to eight or nine bucks. Which is, yeah, so we wanted to make sure we were just being affordable, and Carl was amazing as usual, and got all of these ingredients for super cheap, and under 20 bucks, right Carl? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for everything. This is my new favorite sound, cornstarch squeaky. Oh, I hate she it. She I hate it. it. It's like chalk it's, on It sounds chalk like on stepping in snow to me. Oh. You don't like it. I'm going to squeeze it. Oh, he's going to squeeze it all the time now. I'm going to be like, <laughs> no, I won't. I won't actually do that. We don't condone violence on this show. Now, uh, now that we've gone over our recipe, what we need to do is start thinking about 
our oil yeah. and our boiling. So we've got the water and oil heated, preheated. We do have it preheating, and you'll want to have it preheated too, because honestly, when you've got your batter and everything together, you want to be able to drop that stuff in fairly quickly. Yeah. So it's a lot of, of like preparing by re, like heating and then preparing over here and then just putting it all together at the last minute. That's right. Yeah. So why don't we start? We'll maybe get started. Well, first of all, oh, if we're talking about deep frying. Oh. And cooking in the kitchen. Oh. I thought this week's hot tip. Hot tip. Fire safety. Fire safety. Fire safety. In the kitchen. Yes. So everybody should have a fire extinguisher, even the little ones in your kitchen. Somewhere close by, you can grab it. Yes. I'm just going to go over these quickly. This is my uh, helmet from college, so <laughs> it's nice to use it again. I like to see your name uh, on a fireman's yeah, helmet, yeah. sir. It looks pretty good. So uh, with fire extinguishers, I'm going to go over. Uh, basically, everybody kind of knows, but a lot of people haven't actually used them. So when you when you have yours, you always want to make sure it's charged in the green. And you'll notice letters, A, B, C. Sometimes there's uh, D and K. So A is garbage, wood, stuff like that. B is combustible liquids. C, oh, it's been a while. Electrical fires. D is combustible metals. And K would be for kitchen uh, oils. So if That's you awesome. can find one with a K, uh, small sizes, you usually only get about five or 10 seconds. And the way you use it, there's an acronym called PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. So you pull, pull the pin, aim, A, Squeeze and sweep and aim at the bottom of whatever's on fire. If you feel like you can't do anything about it, you just get out and call 911. Uh, with oils though, with cooking oil, people put water on that don't know what they're doing and it just explodes. So you want to just cover. If, if you get an oil fire, grab a lid, slide it on and what about flour, Carl? I've heard of people using things like flour. Can you do no, that no, to smother? No, any fine particulate, even pepper, oh. anything like that will just will just combust. See? So, uh, yeah. Urban legend. So any, if you can't do anything about it, don't try to be brave. Just leave and call 911. But everyone should have a, an extinguisher or even a fire blanket. They sell those little red. Sometimes you see them bolted on the wall. And those you would just throw over with something on fire. So. That's our hot tip for today, fire safety. Stay safe, my yeah. friends, especially when you're working with hot yeah, oils. Yeah. Thank you, Fireman oh, Carl. There you go. Oh my God, <laughs> this is the best. All right, let's see how long I can wear this before it falls it's off my head. I think on. it's gonna fall off right now, yeah, to be honest. Your fire hey, thank yeah. you. Oh, <laughs> all right, that's all good. No, I appreciate it. So while this is going, we're gonna start with two separate projects so that we kind of stay on track here. Uh, maybe, Carl, you can start putting together the batter, yeah. and maybe what I will do is start You want to chop? Them. Or I'm happy if you do want to so chop. I like my fries with the skin, but I don't know about you. Um, you wanna, let me at least rinse them. Yeah, let's you rinse wanna, them. You want to peel? peel? I love peeling. I think the cornstarch is going to work better for peeling. True, true. It'll to take, be honest. That was another tip we had about uh, putting cornstarch on the fries from just making them extra, extra crispy. Thank you, Ryoko. Yeah. So what can I do with your batter here? So, well, if you would like, what we can do is actually start we're going to start to put in the flour first. So okay. what you need to do is put in a cup of all-purpose flour. Cup. All right. One cup, my friend. Hot enough for everybody today. It is hot, yeah. And while Carl's doing that, I'm going to see what kind of a peeler I've got back here. I may have to peel it by hand, which is not my favorite. No? No. He's not I a good peeler, peeler, I thought. I'm an okay peeler, but I'm not like a pro peeler like you, Carl. Yeah, yeah. Nobody beats me. Nobody beats you. So mm, we might be... Switching jobs in that case, and nobody can see it. So I'm going to start by just peeling this potato while Carl is putting in the flour. Yeah. So again, with the flour today, you don't really need to sift because no, no I would just dump it in. we're going to dump it in because we're not looking to really leaven too much today. We're just putting it right in it. And here I am peeling away as he puts in his flour. Yeah. So after the flour, Carl, the next thing you're going to put well, in is the spices. Doing it manually, eh? I am doing it manually. How how do you usually peel a potato? A peeler. Where is the we peeler? Do peeler. we have a peeler here? We definitely have a peeler. Let me see. If we have a peeler, it's better because when I'm doing it this way, I just feel like somebody in kindergarten. I know my mom and quite a few other people are so adept. Yeah. 
at peeling with knives, which is incredible, but I have never been. How many people prefer to use peelers and how many people prefer to use knives? Peeler. You prefer a peeler, yeah? Yeah, here. Oh, Carl, I hear him coming with yeah, something. Yeah, I knew it was here. Thank you, so thank God. Got my flour. So next thing you're gonna do is put in your garlic powder. So you need a tablespoon of garlic powder, Carl. Just a tablespoon. Just a tablespoon. Uh, maybe I'll make a mistake and add two. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, that's the great thing about seasoning is that honestly, you can adjust it to the way that you feel is good, right? Now, the one thing we want to be cognizant of Actually, today is that the beer is going to be pretty strong. So true. we want to make Maybe sure just that... just a tablespoon and a half. There's a nice little yeah. piece of plastic hanging out in there. Well, that's a pro tip. Check your <laughs> garlic powder for plastic. Okay. All right, after that, you want to put in your tablespoon of paprika. That's a lot of spices. Eh? It's a lot of spices today in this particular now recipe. Now, if you don't like a really spicy recipe, leave out some of the spices. You can get away with just the flour, um, a little bit of salt. You don't have to put paprika. Paprika I'm not so familiar with. It's like that smoky flavor. Yeah. How many people use paprika quite frequently? Anybody on the call? Like to use paprika? I'm all over the place with this camera. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, what else do you use paprika? paprika? I was reading about it like, like that and, and, and turmeric are mostly just for color and stuff. Yeah. Like, so. You do use it for color, but it does have a distinct flavor. Yeah. All right, after that, you need to put in your seasoned salt, wow, two that's tablespoons. that's a lot of salt, eh? Yep. Mm -hmm. Agent, I don't know what this oh, is. This is not taking me all day. Yeah, you know, sorry. I, I would just shake it in as per, yeah. <laughs> so how much salt? Get, two teaspoons. Salt. Yeah, so it won't take too long to put in the two teaspoons of salt there. And as Carl is doing that, and then continuing to peel, hmm. here we go. Okay. So welt. Hmm. Yes, it. salt. Absolutely. Does anybody else have a favorite way to uh, to make their fish? This, the box of kosher is just in the cupboard right there. Mm -hmm. Carl. Yeah, I think so at the top. Um, the the recipe that I use, um, I think in instead of egg, um, yeah. put in baking powder and oh. beer. So baking powder, beer some seasoning um and uh and the flour and and instead of the egg and that puffs it up nice nice oh. um, i just sent you a photo of the cherry bars that i made oh, over the nice. weekend. i would love to see that so one. they came out they came out like a really nice cake actually so yeah, it, was it was great, great. i had just enough cherries to do it so thank you for that oh so happy to hear that and i'm glad it turned out well ronnie mm -hmm. ours turned out really well uh, too nice and soft the cake yeah it was beautiful mm -hmm. the salt, so here we are <laughs> oh carl that's all right you do you kid you do you it, it'll work it gets Just done eventually time. oh maybe a half more yeah half more then, we don't want to be overly my salty egg, right yep then your egg and my beer and your beer i would even hazard to put the beer first and then the egg yeah, you have to gradually whisk in the uh, the egg and the beer. Okay. So you want to beat the egg lightly too before you put it in. Before? Yeah, you could put the egg in. You could maybe just beat it lightly in a little bowl. Mm. This is just to make sure that we don't get any like clumps of, you know, nobody wants scrambled eggs in their batter. I kind of do. You kind of do? <laughs> scrambled eggs and fish and chips. Everybody right. has their own kind of breakfast so, ideal. So we get the bowl. Yeah, get your bowl, you're good to go. How's our oil? Our oil's looking good. good. You may want to crank water, it a little bit. Yeah, water it turned down because that was it's a rolling oil now. Yeah. So for your um for your chips, obviously the boiling water is boiling, that temperature doesn't matter, but for your oil, you want your oil at about 375 so that it evenly cooks. Now, would you pop in a little thermometer? You could totally pop in a thermometer. We, we were missing that part and we're yeah. you know, you know when something's frying, like I will be testing it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll drop in a piece of potato just to see how it's frying. Um, just a little piece, and then if it's good, then we can go ahead and drop the fish in. But I usually do it by eye because at home, I don't know, so many people do have temperatures. So you have to be careful thermometers. putting in the fish, like will it flake off and stuff like that? Well, if you want to make sure that your fish, we're going to have to press our fish and then we're going to have to dry it as much as we can before dipping it into press the batter. It. So yeah, I usually press it with a paper towel. Okay. I'm not so, I don't cook fish often. I, I'll eat it, I like it, 
Yeah. You know, I'm, a, I'm a red meat guy, you know? And I'm a fishy and, girl, yeah. so that's okay. I love well, fish. Maltese, right? Am, it's all seafood. For it's you the guys. Mediterranean. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, we've got that kind of fresh fish. Oh, or you can, you can flour it before putting it in the batter that's as true. well, or that's dry true. it. Your choice. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to. I won't, I'll tell you what, I won't peel these, okay? That's crazy purple. I don't know if they call it. Now he's the, uncomfortable, uh, so I'm going to peel it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a sweet potato so white inside and so purple outside. It must be a different kind I, than the ones I used to eat. Yeah, like so orange. you might be used to the regular sweet potatoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah these are these are a little different. This Can anybody tell us the difference between the two kinds of sweet potatoes? And the, these ones were like, they had huge, like bigger than my head. So <laughs> that's all right. We're going to have a good time. So just drop this in, eh? Yeah, slowly, slowly, slowly. Do you want help while you're whisking? Do you want me to drop it for you? Oh, well, I'm whisking. Okay. Yeah, so okay, let's do that. You ready, spaghetti? Let's show the camera. All right, show the camera. Here comes a little oh, bit. Paprika and flour. It's going to get lumpy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's going to be lumpy because we need well, to put our beer, beer in. beer. Yeah, so there's your lumpiness. Okay. So we need, oh, we're just going to use, so do we have a measuring cup? I Again, just in case anybody wants to see the kind of beer that we're using today, it's a very hoppy beer, but you can really use any beer that yeah, you like. That's Amsterdam. That's an Ontario um, beer. I like local. So you're going to have to let the head come off here oh, for I a second. I wish I could just drink it. No, I know. <laughs> it's a bit early. <laughs> a little too soon in the day okay, for so that. That's almost a cup. I think we have okay. a little foam there. What else? All right. Is it a cup and a half? It's a cup and three just, quarters. Okay, we'll there, add a little more. There we go. We'll think? leave it's it not, like that for now. I might even add to the color. Set your beer it's aside. Kind of a dark beer. Yeah, so he's going to make sure that that comes into a nice pasty kind of thing. We need to make sure that there's no lumps in there. So, wow, is that ever dark? I'm working on it. Yeah, that looks good. He's going to beat that out while I continue oh, going on the sweet yeah, potato here. Nice in there. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Right. So, he's going to beat it out so that there's no lumps. Yep. And then we'll get right onto our fish right after that, okay? So I'm just going ahead here with this sweet potato. Oh, yeah. And then, Carl, I might ask for your help to chop these potatoes into even. Chopping's what I do best. I know, he's a king at chopping. <laughs> just busy work. King at chopping, I'm the king at. What am I the king at, Carl? Oh, I don't know, needing forks. Eating forks and measuring cups. <laughs> no, come on. Carl, I need a new one. Carl, Carl. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm just the king at delegating. Yeah, I yeah. delegate. No, she's the boss. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so going down this way. Okay. Gonna finish this off. So this is looking smooth. Let's see. How smooth? No lumps whatsoever. Oh, it's beautiful, Carl. Yeah. You did a great job. So you want to see the consistency on that, everyone? He'll move the camera up so you can see the consistency. You definitely don't want lumps in your batter, that's for sure. He's really managed to work that out without overworking the gluten, which is great. So if you kept stirring, it gets kind of tacky or... Well, it can get really gluey, like okay, so almost... Leave it. Leave yeah, it. don't overwork it once you've got the... I mean, I think that's the general rule with anything. Just All lumps right. out. Lumps out. Yeah, okay. Now, here we are. It's pretty okay. I mean, I'm not going to worry so much about getting all of the skin off the sweet potato. Just get some of it. I actually find the sweet potato skin, like you do with the regular potatoes, is part of the charm. But... I'm just a fan of leaving the skin on everything. Yeah, no, that's cool. You know Everybody what? The cornstarch was the... the... That's what I was thinking the is the cornstarch, right? So I'm going to put this over here. So what you want to do with your potatoes now is cut them into even kind of sticks, which are really, really important. So nice, nice, even squares. And once those are cut, and the same thing, these can be a little thinner. Yep. So the sweet potato fries can be thinner. Okay, these so need I, to be chunky. You want me to start cutting? Yeah, if you can start cutting, and then we will get into the parboil You're section. You're going to do the potatoes. So I, no, I'm going to leave you for both of these things, and I'm going to get on to portioning and preparing the fish. So I'm going to move this aside here. So I'm going to get a little one. So you want them in fry shape? Yes, sir. If that's okay with you, that's good for me. Now, how do you like them? Thin or like home fries? I like them thick cut, but you make them the way Let's you want to make them. them. I've never done this. This is your week. I like them. They're kind of like... Do you, would you go across and then down like a grid? I kind of do. I kind of go into like squares, so I, mm -hmm. I'm happy to have you do it the way that you do it, though. I'm curious. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's give it a go here. Yeah, I like to have like nice thick chunks, but okay. that being said, so you're almost cutting them into like blocks. That's what I was thinking, like 
yeah. kind of block and then just yeah. fry it off. Here. Of course, yeah. Do it the now, way you're comfortable. Now, how thick is too thick for frying? I mean, that's a good shape. Yeah, right? that's a pretty good. That's do a pretty good shape. Do they shrink much? They do. Yeah. So you want to just yeah, about like that is perfect. perfect. Yeah, those are amazing, Carl. Okay. And look at that. So Carl's tip is to. You know what? How do they get in McDonald's? Sometimes you get a fry that's like this long. I, I think you they think maybe have fake? like a super mandolin or something or in their factory. Super potatoes. I think they've got a mandolin in their factory. <laughs> maybe it's fake. It's hard to know. I think a lot of companies now are moving away from faking yeah. things only because they have to, right? I, I so that's it, really, right? really important. You know, I, was, I, I saw Subway. Yeah. They tested their tuna tuna sandwich. Oh, and they couldn't find They any. didn't find any tuna DNA. In However, it. what I did want to say is that scientists did say to that, yeah. that finding tuna DNA, once the tuna has been processed in any way, so oh, cooked or baked, so there is, is something very, to there is something to that science okay. that basically when you cook something, it changes the actual molecular True, true, and DNA will break down with heat. It will, but I mean, who knows? Like, I don't know what McDonald's does. I can't see. Nobody to, does. No, but that being said, I I know that that was the subway. That was for subway, and yeah. I I know that there was Ooh. an argument to be had about that. Let's get a look at this. So let's take here. a look yeah. at the fish first, so that everyone can see. So this is your. We got that Icelandic cod. Look at that. You can see that it's already been deboned, which is half the battle. Honestly, it's wonderful to get a fish and fillet a fish. If you have all those skills. Would you do that normally? Do I you do. have to take the bones out? I do do that with a lot of things. Not with not with fish and chips. Yeah. But I do it with when I'm like cooking like a whole rainbow trout or something like that. Like so, Some bones go soft enough to just eat. Yeah, right? like you can actually, if you actually cook it on the bone, you can actually peel the entire thing. Uh, like if, if it's sliced, you can peel it out fairly easily. But I mean. There are lots of cases with salmon and other kinds of fish where if you get a whole fish, then you have to butcher the fish and take out and pin bone it, which is a pain in the neck. Yeah. Have lots of people had to pin bone fish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How do you find that process? Are you a pro now or is it just a pain? Do you have like a it's tweezers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I'm going to grab really quickly some. I need some paper towel. Where am oh, I? Oh, I got a bunch here. I can rip more later. Let oh, okay. I'm sorry, Carl. No, no. I was, saving, good, that was, I was saving it to take the oil that, off. That was my favorite paper towel. I know. And I'll here share, I am I'll just share. making a hot mess. Oh, sure. So as per Ronnie, you can definitely dust your fish with flour. What I'm doing is I'm just wrapping it here and I like to press my fish out a little bit. Now, I don't want it to be overly pressed. Obviously, you don't want to damage the fish. But I am trying to get all of that extra moisture out so that the batter sticks. It's a little bit of pressure. Right? It's a little bit of pressure. And you can see, like, look at this side of my paper towel here. I'm just going to hold it up. You can see where, like, the moisture okay. has come through on that. You want to see a little bit of moisture coming out on your fish. Now, um, if you are using pre-frozen fish, again, you want to let it come to room temperature. Somebody who's making fried fish will always say, please use fresh fish if you can. It's always better if you can use fresh fish. But if you're not using fresh fish, which is fine, just make sure it's going to have a lot more water in there from, frozen. from being frozen. Yeah, yeah. So let it come to room temperature, press it out. You may want to press it out twice and then dust with flour, then put it in as well. So if, if it is frozen, I would recommend taking Ronnie's route of 100% using flour. It's going to be too that's thick. no, Carl, that's perfect. We're going to pre-boil them. Okay. So as soon as those are done, Carl's going to pop those into the boiling water. So what we've got there is boiling salted water. Um, and I'm going to set this down up here. The boiling salted water has been on for a little while. You want a nice rolling boil and you want to boil it for five to seven minutes. Um, Just to soften them up. To soften them. You want to yeah. parboil, right? So, oh wow. So you can see with this one right away, look how much liquid was in juicy that. Juicy fish. Juicy fish. <laughs> juicy, juicy, juicy. I am going to, what I'm going to do is cut these. Now, usually I would keep them in nice long sizes, yeah. but I'm going to cut it in half That's today. what I was thinking. Let me just share Rebecca, Rebecca, yes, yes. Uh, you please tell me uh, the, uh, this kind of uh, fish is very uh, smelly or not? Uh, it has a bit of a smish, fishy, a little, bit. A little yeah. bit, but not too bad, Shanaz. Oh. Does it smell like and When they're oh. cooked, Shanaz, they're amazing. Um, if you're thinking about a really, really smelly, strong fish, you're probably thinking maybe more towards pickerel. Um, yeah, trout and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, now like freshwater. Right? Freshwater is a little bit, and, and when you're dealing with things like freshwater fish, they have that bit of a muddy, they can have that bit of a muddy taste to them. This kind of a fish won't have it. It'll be a little bit smelly here, 
But once it comes out, it doesn't smell at all. Okay. And it's super flaky. And the beautiful thing about it is the firmness of the flesh just flakes uh -huh. Really young. Because I've, I've never tried the codfish. I don't know whether it smells or not. not no, so bad not so too far. bad. Yeah. Not too bad at all. I don't like fishy, fishy kind of smell stuff. That's, that's what kept me away from seafood for so long. Uh, so are we doing both at the same time? So we're going to do, the. Uh, I would start this potatoes, first. Potatoes, yeah. Potatoes first. We're going to actually boil, part boil the potatoes first. Then we're going to cook our uh, fish first in the oil because what we're going to do with our potatoes once they're parboiled, uh, we're going to fry them once and then we're going to have to dress them in cornstarch to make them crispy, which is a great idea. Oh, I lost a few. That's okay. Floor fries. Uh, no, no, saw it. no, no, not in there. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought he was coming with floor fries. I was like, five minute, five oh, yeah. second rule doesn't... Oh, he it. washed it. I rinsed it off. He okay. rinsed it off. Okay, so I'm going to turn this back around towards me here. But certainly, uh, Carl, now with this one, I'm yep. going to get you to cut this. You're going to put a little bit, you're going to dress it in some oil, some salt, oh. and pepper. And then you're just going to throw it on a tray in the oven for 20 minutes. Fancy. Yeah. Same size. Same size. Okay, this oh, still feels tough. pretty wet on one that's side, tough. so I'm going to press it twice. But Shanaz, if you go to your uh, fishmonger, either at the grocery store or you can actually... If you're downtown in the market, there's some great fish stores in the Kensington market. They're very friendly and they'll tell you like what's good, what's not good. That and if it's was, your first time. Yeah, he was so helpful. Eh? The young man who helped us was so lovely. Such a nice person. Um, and was, store you said? What's that? Shanat? What was the, nom what the name was of the, the name store of the store? Hooked, H-O-O-K-E-D. Yeah. We can actually link to it so you can see. Um, it, it, everything looks super fresh. Oh and, my gosh, uh, and it's beautiful and firm. And... Just a little store. They're, they are weird hours. It was like 12 to, what was it, 12 to 4? Yeah, uh, you'll find, especially with the places that sell fresh fish, it's kind of like a bakery. Some days they're open, some days they're not. Um, and also, given that it's been a pandemic, hours are reduced, right? So, yes. but honestly, great little store, great person inside giving advice. Highly recommend. Yeah. Highly recommend. So, so oh yeah, we're gonna put these into a pan, but I would say like if you want to, before you put them onto a pan, you can throw them into a bowl, dunk in Thank some olive oil, dunk in some salt and pepper. Okay. And you can kind of see Carl is cutting these finer, which I actually love. Yeah. Because they're gonna be in the oven. So these are cut a lot finer. Than the other chips. Let me so bring that not, down. We're not deep frying these. Hey? We're not deep frying oh, these ones. We're so baking these. Two kinds of fries. Two That's kinds a good, of fries. Good idea. Because some people don't like deep fried true, fries. Very true. Yeah. And these are going to be huge. They are. McDonald's length. There they are. Go. So I'm just cutting down the center of these fillets. I want to keep them fairly uniform in Look size. At this. Look at this. <laughs> huge. Yes. <laughs> so I want to keep these fillets uniform in size. You can see that um, they're fairly uniform. And the thickness is pretty much the same. Again, I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Cut right down the middle. Then we've got four fillets, which is nice. So uniform. Now this one here is a little thinner. This this fillet. So what I'm going to do is put these two in first, let them cook, and then cook these two. You know what the best part about having them smaller What's is that? you get more batter on there. You do get more a lot of batter. More crispy edges. Yeah. Now we can totally dust these with a little bit of flour because Ronnie made that awesome suggestion. Yeah. So maybe we'll take a little bit of flour and we'll dust them. Uh, where is this? Oh, or we can dust them with cornstarch. Behind the mixer. Your cornstarch is here. We just gotta crack it. Over. We gotta crack it? Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a little bit of flour. Just a tiny this little bit. I'm gonna put it, so because I'm not, ooh, I put it in with the beer. I didn't well, realize there was still beer in there. It. I gotta drink it. I'm not drinking flour There's beer. Another, uh, another I'm just gonna grab, <laughs> hang on. Take two, okay. a little tiny bowl. If you don't have a little tiny bowl, you can use a little mug, whatever you've got around, as long as it doesn't have leftover beer in it. Uh, you just throw that in there. I am gonna throw in. So Carl has some. Oh, I had I brought Cajun out because I kind of I don't know. I was gonna add it to my fries and stuff. Yeah. But I'm gonna see, put it on see. here. Is that okay, oh, Carl? No, I like getting creative. Yeah. So I'm putting a little bit of his Cajun because Carl is a spicy Parker. So I'm gonna put it in there. That being said, you can do anything. You can add, I always recommend adding a little bit of seasoning to the flour when you're gonna dust it because you know what? It all comes through in the end, no matter fish. what. Now, um, another good one for the fries, I think, is 
pepper sometimes. People put go salt pepper. On yeah, you can totally oil. go salt pepper on your fries. Okay, so I would get a bowl, oh. and then I would get some oil, okay. and then start tossing. Now I can already smell these Cajun seasonings on the inside, so this is already going to be a good start to the fish. Uh, plus the beer batter on the inside. So here we are drying out our fish a little more, making sure that our batter sticks. Would you use olive oil? Uh, yeah, for these I would 100% use olive oil. Now it's not good to use olive oil for frying, number one, because it's expensive. And uh, boil, uh, I think the flash point of olive oil is pretty low. Yeah, so, so you want to It'll burn careful. or worse, it'll, you know, it's catch on fire. Exactly. So you always want to use corn, canola, or peanut oil. I love peanut oil. Does That's anybody here like to we're just not doing it today because honestly number one is expensive number two it's also a taste thing for everyone like and allergies, and allergies yeah. right we got to think of everyone here not just me peanut oil you find the flavor very different okay i do i love the flavor of peanut oil i just find it brings a real nice bite to everything okay, so All i'm right. just hand uh turning now, tossing. These, now yeah. you toss in a ton of salt and pepper oh yeah throw them on a pan and away you go sir salt. what kind of oil what kind of oil am I using for this one? No, so, no, you mean uh, the, the expensive one. Oh, the expensive one I find is peanut oil. What do you use, Lynn? Pardon? So right now we're using corn oil, which is like Mazzola it's oil. Thing. It's the same thing, Lynn. Okay, so I'm bringing you a hot uh, fry here. So bring me careful, a fry. Careful, careful, careful. We're just going to... Maybe a little bit more, Carl. Like maybe How like did you know? two minutes just from, the from the feel of it. I want maybe another two minutes on there. Okay. Uh, and then we'll pull them out. So we have those chips in hot boiling water. We're going to give it, it's 11.35. We'll give it till 11.37. Oh All right. So, so now, the, is the deep frying pretty quick? The deep frying uh, takes about five to seven minutes. Nice. So that's why I'm not done. Well, it you can go directly. Give it in. Come. Mine is this one. Yours is oh, this one? Oh, the Mazzola. I the see Mazzola. It. Oh, we see it, Lynn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that's a good one, Lynn. Thank you for grabbing that. You have thank a name. you. Yeah. So Carl, we can go ahead and toss that right in the oven you, now. Would you coat the pan with any, or because they are coated? Because I've coated the yeah. fries, I'm pretty okay with them just so like that. Those are looking good. Those are looking awesome. Looking. Let me just turn this so you, we can yeah. actually see. Those are the fries going in the yeah, oven. I'll nice follow Carl into the oven. Nothing wrong with greasy hands. That's okay. Here we go. One thing you can do instead of um, parboiling, um, yes. you can use your microwave to. Oh. That's a, that's pre, kind of pre-cook and then fry. Yes. Uh, you can also do that yeah. with something like chicken. If you're barbecuing, you can kind of pre-cook chicken in the microwave and then yeah. just grill it so it doesn't overcook. Absolutely. So Ronnie, anyway. when you're doing that, how long do you put it in for recommending? Um, recommending? You know, it like medium, medium nuking um just you 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 kind of feel it out when you're getting when it's starting to soften okay you do the the fork test right i yep. like the fork test exactly so I'm okay just, loosen yeah, stuff yeah, out let's of the clean way up here. a little bit it's always important a clean kitchen means a clean mind again what does that mean it means our kitchen is always a disaster <laughs> So you're going to dip them just straight we are going to dip them and then drop them but before we do that i want to test the oil with a chip the old dip and drop. The old dip and drop. Yeah, so I'm going to actually, we'll, we'll just decide whether or not this oil is hot enough. It's, it's been on for a good while. Yeah, I'm going to take you're gonna dip. Now we don't want, I see the oil is smoking, so we may want to turn it down a little bit. We don't want it to burn. We're going to turn on, Carl, we're turning on, what is that there, the fan? It's our fan. We're turning on the fan to make sure that we don't cause a flash point, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. So I'm just letting the oil. It's very hot. Yeah, so the oil is incredibly hot. We can drain the potatoes now, Carl. Okay. I would pull them out. Yep. And I'm going to dip and drop next to the stove because I want to be able to hold it here with all the extra batter and then back and forth and dunk it. So we are going to do this first only because, um, honestly, usually it's nice to have two pots of oil going if you're going to do it at the same time but we don't have that luxury here. And I'm assuming at home, many of us don't want to have multiple pots of oil on. So I'm gonna, I've recommended that we do it in the same one. Um, we're gonna do the fish first so that the cornstarch again, doesn't kind of conflate the taste of the fish. We don't want anything to do that. So we're just letting the oil tap come down a little bit. 
Kyle is dumping out the potatoes. I'm going to dry one and test it because you don't want to put something soaking wet in a super hot oil. That's just not a good idea. It's going to cause a lot of a spark point, like it'll just spit back in your face. Yeah. So we don't want to do that. So I am going to dry it off. And I think I need more paper towel. Where do I get it? Is it around here? Right behind me? Underneath? Paper towel? Yeah. Here. Oh, Carl, you're the best. Thank you, my love. I'm going to crack a window. Yeah, Carl is going to crack a window because it's getting super hot in here. And that's the one thing that you're going to find is that it gets pretty hot. Now, I can tell that this fry is done not just by the look of it, but also by the feel of it. It feels a little bit fragile, but not too fra fragile. So, Fireman Carl's on the job now because we are getting a bit smoky. Carl, should we just, uh, are you okay bringing this over here? Yeah, I'm just going to kill the heat for now. Oh, we're going to use it now. Yeah, okay. If you want to get going, let me yeah. take care of this. We maybe don't want to turn the heat off because if we do, we won't cook it. Okay. I would maybe just turn it off low. All right, so what I'm going to do, so I can tell right away that this oil is ready to work. You can see right here. Now you can drop it in with a top, but you can see right away. Look how brown that's turning right away. Yeah, yeah. So we brought that oil down in temp a little bit because that's if I hold this in here for a moment, which I would recommend using tongs if you've got them. Yeah. Now, do you think there's too much oil? Because when we add fries, it's going to... So know. that's pretty hot. So you can tell that that oil is really, really hot because it's already browning and it hasn't really touched the inside too much. So we're going to try to drop the temperature a little bit. I think maybe you are ready. I'll turn it right off for a moment. There's some other holes Yeah, I would... Can I actually have those ones, Carol? Because those ones will be more... Um, so you can put on a pair of heat resistant gloves if you wish to do this as well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this over. Carl, do you want to join me? Sure. All right. So this is, we'll turn it back to low in just a moment. We're letting the temp of the oil come down just slightly yeah. uh, to low. I would have it on super low. Um, what do you want me to do? And then now what we're going to do is bring this over. Maybe you want to control the camera. If you want to do one too, Carl, you feel free. We're going to start with about two pieces at a time. We're going to time it so it's, uh, Carl, do you know what time it is? 23.41. 20, okay. So 23.41, that is, is that on time? That'll change? Yeah. Okay, cool. So now we've got that in there. We're going to pull it out because it, and we're going to let the excess kind of fall off of it. You can see it's like quite thick, but I do want to make sure that I'm not... All right, there we go. Oh, I'm just pulling the batter off of these. So, all right, going to go ahead. Pick this up, then drop it in slowly, okay? So I'm just dropping off that excess batter. Here we go. One, two, and in. All right, there we go. You can see that some of the batter has already come up, so we have to turn it down to super low because that's already cooking pretty strongly. And it's got to stay in there. Ooh, and you can see it's quite hot. I think the oil might be too hot. I turned it off. One, two, you want to show what I'm doing here, mister? Awesome. So here's our second piece. We're just letting that drip off a little bit. Here we go. It's going to drop the temp a bit. One, two. So the nice thing is that actually the batter is sticking quite nicely to the fish, which is good. So we're going to leave this in for about five to seven minutes and let it come up. It's not coming up as quickly as the other one because the oil is still not perfectly to temperature. But we're going to give it a go and see how it turns out. One piece. So, leaving the oil on, not draining the oil, as per Ronnie's suggestion. Dripping it off here. You want to taste it? Oh, this is hot. Wait. Two pieces. Interesting color that the beer made uh, the batter. Yeah, and also you'll notice that the first one puffed up huge. This didn't puff up huge because the temp that we used was a little bit different. So temperature is key, I think. Temp is key. Yeah. You want 375. No All guessing right. on strange ovens. Yes. Neither of us know this one. It seems to go very hot. Yeah, it sure does. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, Carl, right. you want to step back because sure. I'm going to do the fries. I'm just worried. You're going to dump? I'm going to try to put, well, I don't want to touch them too uh, much. Yeah, just so good. just slowly. These are covered in cornstarch. In they get. Yep. So in they go. All the way in. Okay. And there we go. And we don't want to handle them too much because they're so fragile. But we're going to cook those now for another three to four minutes before we serve. Well, okay. Yep. Oh. All right. So beautiful. So once you got that done, 
Then you want to season your chips. So we're gonna just drunk a bunch of salt. The salt is great on hot chips. We're gonna grab a few of the chips. I need to grab, maybe we don't have clean tongs anymore, right? Eh? Oh, Carl, so great. So we're gonna do that. This is looking pretty good. And then we're gonna have Carl, do you want tartar, cream of tartar or anything like that, Carl? Okay. Cream of tartar, tartar sauce. Nobody wants cream of tartar okay. in there. Stuff so you would have it with you can have it if you have time to make some tartar sauce You can certainly make tartar sauce have it with a bit of lemon or you could have it with ketchup whatever really strikes your fancy So we'll put a few of those on the plate Beautiful, okay, Carl You want to cut into it? We'll look ready for your fish. test? Fish, yeah. We're gonna have a look at the fish and Carl's ready for his taste test mm. We'll pull out the sweet potatoes next but in the meantime, I'll get those and you go ahead and have your taste test Take a look into the fish, see how it turned out. How is it, Carl? Flaky? Looks great and crunchy and flaky. Yeah. All right, let's give it a taste. Mm -hmm. That's a good batter. Good. Now, for those of us who want a piece of baked fish, there's your baked fish. Here's your baked fries. So if you want a healthy version of sweet potato fries. It all looks great. Congratulations. Mm. <laughs> you survived. We did. Oh my gosh. Go team. <laughs> we made it. Oh. And these are delicious. Yeah. So whichever ones you prefer, you do you. And even that baked fish came out gorgeous. It's my favorite dish. Really, really good. So friend, Thank you for being with us today. Yeah. We totally appreciate you bearing with us as we went through our kitchen disaster. We can't always be perfect. We can't always be perfect, but we can always do our best. Friends, thank you so much for being here. We love you. We appreciate your time. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank, thank you, you Rebecca. And Bye, everybody. Bye, friends. Bye. Bye. Bye.